Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are taking a look, sort of, at this South African R4 Galil rifle. Except we're not really looking at the R4, what we're looking at today is a 22 caliber conversion kit. And you may look at this and go, well, oh boy, whatever, it's a 22 kit. This is actually a really mechanically interesting one. And this is a, a conversion mechanism that was designed by a South African guy by the name of Tony Neofitu, who nobody really knows about this thing. What people are familiar with are his uh, dual tube pump shotgun, the Neostead 2000, and his 20 millimeter shoulder fired grenade launcher, the Neopop, or Inkunzi PAW. But this was something he put together um, hoping to sell it to the South African military when they were looking for a 22 kit. And it's really slick, so let me show you how this works. So the typical conundrum of a 22 conversion kit is that you want it to, basically you want it to be as, as inexpensive and easy to use as possible. You want to be able to just drop it into a service rifle without having to make any modifications. And then you want it to duplicate the actual feel and handling of the rifle that it's being used in. Because if you're not duplicating, if you're not being able to actually train people on the details of their specific service rifle, then why bother with a conversion kit? Just buy standard 22 rifles. So what this design does, let me pull the, the guts out, uh, what you have to do to install it is remove the bolt from the rifle, the original rifle, and then we have a basically a replacement here for the gas, the gas piston uh, and the bolt. And this is a little 22 caliber bolt head. There are a pair of extractors in there, so that actually duplicates the ejection angle of the AK, or the, the R4, the Galil, which is important because of course you have to get a case out that ejection port between the receiver and the receiver cover. Um, it has a little gas piston in here, and that's what actually operates this. It's not a floating chamber design, and it's not a blowback system. It is actually a gas piston. In addition to the replacement for the bolt carrier, there is also this chamber adapter. So uh, being a South African Galil, it's chambered for 5.56 originally, so uh, that means you already have a 22 caliber barrel, so you don't need a barrel insert. Instead there's just a chamber insert, and there are two cavities in here. This is for the actual cartridge, and this is the gas system. So there's a little port, you can see it was originally drilled here and then plugged at the bottom. So there's a gas port just in front of the bullet in the 22 case. And as the 22 travels not just down this, but all the way down the rifle barrel, it's maintaining pressure in the barrel, which is diverted up here into this little teeny gas system. And that's what powers the gun. It still uses the original recoil spring. Now to install this, all we have to do is slide it in here, and this lug is going to lock in under the recoil lug. There's a little spring-loaded detent there. That snaps into position, like so. All right, now we can install the actual bolt carrier. Because this doesn't have an articulated arm in it, I'm actually going to pop the gas tube off and install them together. So we'll put that in there, and then roll this in. So that's in place, and then we just install the gas tube. There we go. Now our new bolt carrier is in place. Like I said, this actually uses the original recoil spring as the mainspring for the system, even though it's in 22 rimfire. Put that in, and then we can replace the top cover. And there we are. That's the gun, but of course you also need magazines. So uh, Neofitu's system has a 10 round magazine this is an insert. You simply take the floor plate and the follower out of an original Galil mag, put in the 10 round 22 caliber insert, and then you replace the magazine spring and replace the floor plate, and you have a 10 round 22 mag. Locks in place just like a standard R4, and it cycles like this. So uh, when you fire, you actually have a little teeny gas piston system right here. Uh, in theory, you're still getting a little bit of gas pressure in the original R4 gas block, but that's just going to vent out. Uh, by the time you get pressure there, this is already functioning, really. And that's all there is to it. Let's go see if it works. All right, so we've got the system installed. 
I've got 10 rounds in the magazine. We'll set it to repetition to begin with, semi-auto. There we go. So what this does that a lot of 22 conversions, including, by the way, the one that the South African Army ended up adopting, what they don't do is actually replicate all of the functions of the original gun. With this one, you're using the same standard hammer in the gun to actually do the firing. Your trigger pull is exactly the same as the trigger pull in 5.56. The ejection is the same, the charging handle is the same, the magazines are the same. The entire manual of operation is identical to the standard rifle. And that's, if you're using a 22 kit for training, low-cost training, that's exactly what it needs to do. If you just want to teach people accuracy and target practice, then you can go get some you know, cheap bolt-action 22 rifles, and they'll be better for target practice than something like a converted service rifle. But if you want service rifle training, this is what you need. It's not just semi-auto either. If the base rifle, like this standard R4, is a full-auto capable, the 22 kit is too. I've only got five rounds in there. I should point out, this is a one-of-a-kind prototype conversion kit, so it occasionally has some magazine foibles, as do all 22s. But it does work in full auto. I need to do that again. <laughs> there is something really fun about 22 caliber machine guns. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's not, you know, normally when, when someone pointed this out to me, I'm like, well, okay, it's a 22 kit, and, yeah, okay. But the closer you look at it, it's actually pretty slick. Um, and really neat how it actually duplicates uh, all of the characteristics of the original gun, in particular, the trigger pull. So. Anyway, if you enjoy seeing this sort of thing on the net, please do consider signing up uh, to help support me directly. It's you guys right there that make it possible for me to travel, find cool guns like this one, and bring them to you guys. Thanks for watching.